indeed a great pleasure for us to have Professor Ikeuchi give this talk. Uh, this particular talk is getting recorded and also streamed. Uh, so hopefully those of you who were not able to come, uh, I mean, some of your friends, uh, please let them know and they would be able to uh, see these things on CalIT2 website. Uh, Thank you very much. So today's talk is uh, uh, E-Heritage Cyber Archaeology and the Cloud Museum. And probably you may wonder, what's uh, this E-Heritage? So I have to explain what is E-Heritage. Basically, what we are doing is we digitize this kind of uh, real heritage into digital form. And then also we are worrying about how to uh, display such heritage in cyber world or whatever. And why we are working this area? Because, you know, uh, heritage is uh, priceless and irreplaceable and vanishing every day. So it is a good idea to safeguarding heritage in digital form. And also, uh, by using such data, we can conduct scientific research, uh, which we are calling uh, cyber archaeology. And also, we can display content uh, in the uh, cloud museum. And that provides good opportunity uh, for uh, computer vision and computer graphics communities. That is the motivation of these uh, areas. And in this uh, uh, e-heritage project, there are two issues. One is how to model such heritage. And second issue is how to display. And the half, first half of my talk, I'm mainly uh, talking about these uh, modeling issues. And further in this modeling issue, there are two kinds of uh, problems. One is uh, how to obtain shape information and also how to obtain color and specularity. First, uh, geometric uh, uh, modeling. And as an example of this uh, geometric modeling, I'm explaining one of the uh, representative work which I conducted in uh, Cambodia. Uh, in this uh, particular project, we are digitizing one particular uh, temple called the Bayon Temple. The Bayon Temple, located at the center of Angkor Thom, unites the outlook on the universe of ancient India and the tradition of Khmer. The temple was constructed around the end of the 12th century to bring relief to the crisis in the Angkor era. It is well known for the appearance of, for example, calm smiling faces on towers and double corridors carved in beautiful, interesting relief. Uh, this is a temple which we were working. And why uh, we are working in this temple? Because central tower is inclining and there is possible corruption in near future. So it is a good idea to obtain data while it is existing. That is our motivation. Now, problem is, this temple is a huge structure, 150 meter, 150 meter, uh, 30 meter height. Size is uh, huge and also complicated. Due to that, uh, there are many challenges. Usually, in this uh, uh, geometric modeling, there are three steps of uh, pipeline uh, processing. First, data acquisition. And since data is obtained from various viewing directions, so we have to worry about relative relation between sensors and also how to connect all data into uniform mat, uh, format. If object is relatively small, already there are many commercially available sensor softwares. However, due to the size of a Bayon temple, we have to solve every aspect of issues. First of all, data acquisitions. Uh, yeah, actually, so due to that, you know, uh, we have to design new sensors and also we have to uh, design uh, new softwares. First, data acquisitions. Usually, we obtain two classes of data. One is uh, color data. As you know, color data, each position we store uh, brightness, red, green, blue. And uh, uh, color image is a two-dimensional array of just red, green, blue values. We also obtain data called range data. What is range data? At each position, 
Range data store physical distance between sensor and object. In this uh, color image, by using a uh, user digital, uh, uh, digital camera, we can obtain this kind of color images. However, uh, range images, we have to obtain this uh, range image by using sensor called range sensors. And one of the typical example of range sensor is the time of flight uh, sensors. Laser project laser to the uh, object and then uh, measure the uh, flight time that provide distance. This is an example of one range data. From frontal direction, it looks black and white image. However, since at each pixel, we know the distance, so we can rotate and see the distance of each part. In fact, there are many commercially available sensors from Silax to Vivid to 100 meter range up to 20 centimeter range. And resolution wise, 5 millimeter accuracy or 0, 0 0.1 centimeter, millimeter accuracy. Then what is a research issue when we apply this kind of uh, sensor to Bayon Temple? One of the problem is all the sensors are ground-based, meaning we put the sensor on tripod and wait in a uh, Silax case 15 minutes, you can obtain one lens image. Well, it's fine. This is one of the examples of pagoda in Japan. And uh, from the ground, all the area's data is obtained, of course. But due to the occlusion from the ground, some portion's data is missing. What we can do? Well, in fact, you know, a pagoda case, we can build a scaffold around the object and bring sensor on top of the uh, scaffold. Then you can obtain data. But we are talking about 150 meter, 150 meter, 30 meter structures. So we cannot bring sensor, uh, we cannot make a, a, a scaffold along that uh, huge object. What we can do? One of the idea is, why don't you hang the sensor under balloon? And then, you know, you can bring a sensor any place. And this is a scene which we are doing. Uh, this is a range sensor. And this is a, a balloon, so you can bring any place by using this kind of method. But of course, research issue exists. Problem is, well, obtain data is like that. And of course, it's not good, right? And uh, uh, university professor is good positions. Uh, there is an automatic problem solver, meaning a grad student. And when you encounter a difficult problem, Give that topic to the grad student, or if you solve this problem, you can get a PhD. And wait three years, <laughs> solution come out. And in my case, I gave this problem to the uh, Dr. Bano, yeah. He, yep. At that time, Mr. Bano, and he solved that uh, problem by adding TV camera on this uh, lens sensor, and by combining image sequence and uh, distorted range data, he came up with uh, three constraints and then, uh, I will skip the detail, uh, but you know, uh, solve the nonlinear minimization process and uh, well, this kind of equation, they forget it. Uh, basically, uh, from this data and image sequence, he can come up with this kind of solutions. Even distorted cases from image sequence and range uh, distorted range data, he come up with this kind of uh, uh, solution. We develop uh, various uh, executive sensors like that, like this uh, radar sensors, or uh, mirror sensors, or photometric sensors. And then this is a scene which we are obtaining uh, data. In order to scan large architectural structures such as the Bayon Temple, we have to use different types of sensors depending on the location of objects in the site. To scan the deity faces of Bayon, we used a long-range laser sensor named Cyrax. We measured each face from many positions such as the ground, a scaffold on the roof, and a bucket lifted up by a crane. 
The data from different directions were integrated, and a 3D digital model of each face was built. To scan the fine reliefs carved both on the wall surrounding the temple and on the wall inside the small rooms, we use a short-range laser sensor named Vivid. As for the wide area of the wall, we measure this iteratively by shifting a sensor mounted on a small crane little by little. Many available reliefs are left on the pediment of the tower surrounding the terrace. However, they could not be scanned from the front side because they are hidden behind the architecture itself. Thus, the upper part of the reliefs were measured from the terrace, while the lower parts of the relief were measured from the ground by using a special sensor that utilizes a mirror. Data from both sources were integrated, and complete 3D digital models of the reliefs were built. To scan the open space around the corridor and the whole structure inside the towers, an omnidirectional laser sensor named Z plus F Imager was used. With this sensor, the entire structure of the temple, including the corridor, was measured by a small number of scans. To scan the narrow space between the terrace and the corridor, a laser sensor named Climbing Sensor, which moves vertically along a ladder, had been developed and was used. Bayon Temple is a huge architectural structure with a large number of high towers, and it is not practical to scan the upper side, especially the roofs from scaffolds. For this task, we used a balloon sensor, a laser sensor suspended under a balloon, which had been developed for this purpose. Two different types of laser sensors were alternatively equipped, depending on the distance to the target. So this is a, a story how we obtain range data. And you may think this is the end of the story. In fact, this is the beginning of headache. The reason is, you know, uh, all the data is obtained from various viewing direction, and we are talking about uh, uh, 10,000 range images. And uh, so we have to determine relative relation between uh, every pairs, and also we have to merge together more than uh, 10,000 range images and quarter terabyte data. So we have to design parallel, uh, parallel programs. One of the issue is alignment. You know, uh, basically alignment, if uh, we have to uh, estimate the relative relation without uh, markers. And there is a, a program called ICP make a, a correspondence between point and uh, gradually, iteratively determine rotation and translation, like this. But problem is, this kind of pairwise, if you go like this, gradually error accumulate. If you go like this, gradually error accumulate. And if you go 10,000 chains, huge gap occurs. And of course, there is a solution. Basically, if you load all the data and uh, uh, consider all together, but problem is we are talking about a quarter terabyte. And of course, that memory overflow occurs. Computational time is uh, approximately one year. And again, I give this problem to the grad student. I'm saying, well, uh, in order to align data, it takes uh, one year of CPU time and uh, uh, PhD is three years, and if there is a bug, you lose one year. Uh, so of course he <laughs> came up with a good idea, and uh, he designed two, uh, two step algorithm. One is a quick pairwise alignment algorithm by using GPU, so that on site for data checking, and then uh, parallel simultaneous alignment algorithm on PC cluster off site in the university. And uh, next issue is once you obtain relative relation, again, you have to connect smoothly by considering uh, sensor uh, reliabilities. And uh, uh, in this area, again, there is a, a famous uh, uh, merging algorithm called volumetric based, based merging. But the issue is, in our case, one sensor has a five millimeter accuracy, yeah, five millimeter accuracy, 
1 centimeter, 1 cent size 0.1 millimeter accuracy, and this guy 5 centimeter accuracy. So simple margin doesn't work well. Then uh, we come up the uh, approach, uh, confidence-based consensus surface algorithm, and connect it all together. And this is a result, 150 meter, 150 meter, uh, 30 meter structure is represented one centimeter resolution. These are the story how we obtain uh, data of a uh, Bayon temple. But in my opinion, just one single temple is not enough. We should uh, uh, pay attention to expand our effort from point to areas. So uh, we begin to digitize other sites in Cambodia, such as Prea Bihia. The reason why we decide to uh, digitize Prea Bihia is this is existing border between Thailand and Cambodia. And any time war occurs, and there may be possibility this uh, temple may be destroyed. So uh, we are digitizing this uh, uh, prayer be here. And also uh, other uh, area too, Koke Ruin. Some other site in Italy, such as in Pompeii and Soma Vesviana. This is uh, Casa de Menandro in Pompeii. But you know, uh, our Japanese uh, effort is limited. So definitely we need a collaboration partners. So we are uh, extensively searching collaborators, such as Cambodian people, Egypt people, and India and Panama. And one of the uh, example in uh, Cambodia is we are try to technology transfer to uh, Cambodian people. Originally digitization by Japanese team, but recently digitization by Cambodian people. By initial training given by us, and software and hardware we provide, and data collection is done by Cambodian people, and data processing is also uh, done by Cambodian people. And one of the examples is a Bayon main Buddha or a bus relief in the Angkor Wat. And this is a scene which we are training uh, Cambodian people. And in fact, somehow they prefer a physical copy. So once they digitize, uh, obtain this kind of cross section, and the Cambodian people are caving the copy of this uh, uh, Buddha. And also, we are digitizing bus relief of Angkor Wat. And this is uh, uh, data which is digitized by Cambodian people. These are the issue of uh, geometry. Another issue is uh, photometric modeling. And uh, uh, I'll skip this one, but you know, uh, how to uh, obtain uh, relative relation between sensor is one of the issue because Range data is obtained by range sensors, and color image is obtained by color uh, cameras. In order to paste this texture, we have to worry about the camera calibration between range sensor and uh, uh, color cameras. Another issue is uh, illumination. Bayon is a huge structure, so when you begin to take a picture from morning, when you come back, evening, and color is totally different. And of course, for graphics purpose, you can make average between morning photo and evening photo. But for the purpose of preservation, we have to obtain real color. What is real color? Basically, observed color is multiplication by surface color with uh, illumination colors. So somehow, we have to remove effect of sun. And one of the uh, grad student, Rei Kawakami, come up a good idea. If we take a two image of the same scene, under the assumption illumination is black body, and in fact, sun is black body radiators, sky is black body radiators. So we assume uh, if illumination is black body radiator, by shooting two images of exactly the same positions, by comparing, we can obtain real color. And uh, uh, brightness uh, collaboration, uh, evaluation, we obtain this kind of real color. 
Third issue is、uh, RGB. Well, usually we obtain RGB camera, but what is RGB? Light is a continuous spectrum of wavelengths of various、uh, wavelengths. And RGB is simply sampling one particular wavelength, R, G, and B. This kind of image,、uh, for example, if there is a gap, we cannot obtain such gap. Another issue is under some unfortunate situation, RGB, even though original color is different, Uh, original spectrum is different, we cannot see the difference at all. So, definitely, we have to obtain spectrum. And yes, there is a sensor called spectrum sensor which provides spectrum of one particular point like this. But if you are talking about the entire wall of a Bion temple, it is you know,、uh, time consuming. So, we have developed a couple of the sensors. One of the sensors is interference filter sensors. We paste、uh, this kind of uh, uh, filter at each position, transpassing a wavelength is different. And this is just a black and white TV camera. s And by rotating this one, we can obtain entire spectrum of wall. Another sensor which we designed was a liquid crystal、uh, filter sensor. s This liquid crystal filter, depending on incoming、uh, voltage, transpassing wavelengths is different. So, by changing the voltage, we can obtain uh, various uh, uh, wavelengths、uh, image of this particular target. By using this kind of sensor, we can quickly obtain wave,、uh, spectrum data of wall. Now, Once you obtain 3D data and spectrum data, for what purpose we can use such data? And the immediate solution is of course, we can create this kind of uh, uh, movies where if you're walking around the Bayon Temple under moonlight, you see this kind of image. Or if you are invited to dinner in Roman people, Casa de Menandro looks like that. This kind of uh, 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 video contents you can create. But if purpose of your work is just video contents, you know,、uh, by mounting this <laughs> kind of、yeah. camera on <laughs> oriental style, oriental style, walking <laughs> 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 around. <laughs> and then, you know, <laughs> of course, you know, you have to worry about、uh, how to. Remove the、uh, vibrations, but by, after this, you can obtain this kind of 360 degree video easily.、And、this is much cheaper than going through 3D data. Then, what is the purpose of 3D digitization? In fact, 3D data p r o v i d e more information, which we call cyber archaeology. By analyzing this kind of 3D data and spectrum data, we can provide new insight in archaeological areas. One of the examples, floor plan. Well, you know, Casa de Menandro, as I told you, we digitize. And once we create a 3D data, so we extracted the、uh, floor plan from the 3D data. And red one is obtained, and black one is uh, uh, published the data by Italian government. Somehow, frontal area, both data is consistent. However, back here, there is inconsistency, of course. Why? Probably because this Casa de Menandro is built floor, you know, flat area and the hillside. Backyard is this hillside, while frontal area is this uh, 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 horizontal、uh, floors. And traditional way to measure the distance between w a l l is put tripod and measure this distance. This is traditional way. While 3D case, 
Once you create the 3D data of the entire structure and make a cross section, so probably that is the reason why discrepancy occurs. We create a floor plan of a Bayon temple. And originally, I assume this is an east-west line, this is north-south line. But somehow, entire structure rotates 0.94 degree counterclockwise. I don't know why, but we can obtain this kind of observation. Faces. Bayon has 173 faces. We digitize all the faces. In fact, some researcher says from subjective judgment, they can classify these face, faces into three groups. And uh, uh, since that is subjective uh, uh, judgment, so we run face recognition algorithm and classify. And certainly, yes, we can classify this hundred, by the way, this is a, a each point correspond uh, face, one face. Certainly, we can classify these 173 faces into three groups. Devata type, Deva type, Ashura type. And we can generate a line which separates female and male god, uh, male actually. And then uh, this is a line which separates god and devil. I don't know why a uh, man has devil and god, while female only god. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, this is a fact, you know. And we uh, run the uh, similarity classification. Of course, this, uh, from subjective judgment, we cannot uh, uh, classify. Just subtle. But it turned out similar, one similarity group existing here, another similarity group existing here, third similarity group, fourth similarity group. Somehow, Similar face, faces exist at proximity positions. And uh, there was a rumor, actually, a few independent team of workers exist, and they gave faces in parallel manners. From that anecdote, or a rumor, rumor uh, probably one worker group gave these faces, another uh, worker group gave this group, Third worker group gave this group, fourth worker group this case. Namely, there may be possible possibility that there are four independent worker group exist, caving in parallel manners. Pediment. A pediment is a triangle-shaped decor engraved on the upper side of the entrances and on windows. The Bion's pediments are framed by two snake gods called Naga. In fact, you know, uh, when, uh, actually, you know, I should uh, explain why this is difficult. Because, you know, this pediment is existing this kind of area. Even today, you visit the Bion temple, you cannot see pediment at all. Most of the pediment is hidden, like that, due to the... Uh, new structure built by uh, other king. And uh, this is a gap around 30 to 40 centimeters, and height is 5 meters. So before us, there is no picture of pediment, because there is no clearance to take pictures. But we obtain range data through mirrors every 10 centimeters, and paste all together, and generate synthesized image just I show you. And when I gave a talk at the UC Berkeley, one of the professors from Buddhist department was quite excited previous video. For me, this is just, you know, a pediment picture. But according to him, this is not my interpretation, according his, his interpretation. Apparently, there was a Buddha caved out converted into linga, men's symbol. Namely, represented Shiva as a linga by removing Buddha 
meaning this is uh, evidence of religious change of this temple from Buddhism to Hinduism. So by obtaining this kind of range data and generating synthesized image, again, we can provide new finding, not new finding, but you know, some supporting finding to archaeology. Pompeii, uh, Pompeii statues, and actually we sta uh, scan the Pompeii uh, statue and then uh, compare the food. It turned out, even though this is a different uh, uh, statue, but they are exactly the same shape. So apparently, ancient people are using similar pattern for different uh, statues. Now, let's go to the uh, color analysis, photometric analysis, painting. And uh, in fact, in Japan, there are many tumulus exists which has a painting like that. But unfortunately, that is closed by public. So Kyushu National Museum are interested in to create video content and allow us to go inside with this kind of tumulus. So we obtain 3D shape and uh, uh, spectrum data. And of course, we can create video content. This is a by the way, tumulus. And the inside is around here. And currently, preventing a destruction, uh, uh, fallout, so there are many support, in fact. And along the wall, there is a painting. So by using this kind of data, we can create a, a video content. And in fact, this is display at Kyushu National Museum. But the point is, not only video content, but also spectrum analysis. Why we are interested in this spectrum analysis? Because there are two groups of scholar in Japan. One group of uh, scholar believe this painting was done under torch, while the other group scholar believe this is done under sunlight. And in fact, this uh, uh, torch people is a majority, and the sunlight interpretation is minority. One of the friends from, from Kyushu National Museum is belong to this uh, minority group. So they ask us, why don't you run simulation? How it looked like this painting under torch, and how it looked like under sunlight. This is a result. Apparently, there is a line which is visible under sunlight while invisible under torch, meaning it is most likely this painting was done under sunlight. Then, that provides new interpretation how they created this cave. If this is done under torch, they complete this tumulus and hill, and then later bringing the torch, go inside and can paint. But if this is done under sunlight, meaning just only complete wall painting, and then put ceiling and make a hill. So by running this kind of simulation, provide new interpretation how they create this kind of tumulus. Another example, Noriba tumulus. Uh, this is uh, if, uh, the same story. Uh, Kyushu National Museum is interested in to create uh, uh, digital contents. But in this case, problem was failed pattern. It is thin, and we cannot see any pattern at all. But by learning uh, spectrum analysis and a little bit of software called uh, uh, layer analysis, we can find this kind of triangular pattern. And this triangular pattern is originally expected because this is common in that area. But not only this triangular pattern, but also we can find called sokyakurin jomo, I don't know English name, two foot uh, man shape of uh, the pattern. And originally they believe this kind of pattern doesn't take this, this area. But by learning this kind of uh, layer analysis, we can find this kind of pattern. Now, maybe 10 more minutes. <laughs> final, uh, final area, display, and cloud museum. 
And uh, uh, basically, in my opinion, this kind of data should be uploaded on the cloud computers so that any place anyone can enjoy this kind of e-heritage. This is ideas. And uh, uh, one of the issues is how to obtain this kind of cloud data. If it is existing, like uh, Angkor, Wat, Angkor Wat or Angkor Tom, just digitization. Partially existing Nara Big Buddha create. Third one, no existing case, ASCA case, drawing to CAD data. Existing case, Pompeii case, you know, just walking around and create, of course, research issue exists, vibration, how to remove vibration and obtain this kind of videos. And then, you know, another issue is, uh, yeah, biome, 3D data, okay, I skip this one. And uh, uh, partially existing case, for example, uh, this uh, Nara Big Buddha originally built around uh, the 8th century, but burned twice, and currently that doesn't exist. So we digitize and then morph and then obtain uh, original shape. But I will skip this one again. And third one, just uh, create from uh, drawing to CAD data, if that doesn't exist. Now, next issue is how to use such data for display. For motivation to visit, exhibition at the museum site, guidance while visiting, and MR display at the site, and uploading your comment through this uh, digital data. Motivation to visit site, this is easy. Just you know, create a website, and if you click, video appears. Yes, if that is just video, we can create. But the research issue is, if this kind of terabyte data, how can we download these research issues? And one of the students is conducting research called the network uh, rendering. And his idea is partial data is downloaded and on-site uh, on painting. And by using this kind of method, even we can create this kind of uh, connection experiment between UC Berkeley Tohoku University and U Tokyo, so that separate archaeologists can exchange opinion through the same data. Orientation is relatively easy. Just you know, uh, display this kind of data at the uh, exhibition center. Now, learning on site. Well, in Japan, this kind of situation often occurs. Yes, this this is famous, uh, you know, uh, ruin called uh, uh, Kawahara Dera but only base existing because most of the uh, Japanese uh, uh, temple was made of wood. So often fire destroyed and only basement. And of course, if you have a, a rich knowledge of history, you are really enjoy, oh, this is famous uh, Kawaradar temple and here some important event occur. But the problem is uh, school children they don't care this kind of dirty basement, and then they sit down on that base and then have a lunchbox and disappear. And there is no educational uh, education that occur, doesn't occur, actually. So mayor of this village is uh, uh, angry and asks me, is there any way to improve that situation? So, which we, so I propose, why don't you provide Google to the students and then if, we, if they wear the goggle, you can see this kind of temple, they really understand the importance of this area. This is called mixed reality. You can see CZ on that exact side, while you are feeling wind continuously blowing from ancient time, feeling sunlight on your body. And this is a fusion with a CZ with a, a current background. And uh, uh, in this uh, research uh, muse, uh, mixed reality, we have to worry about two issues. One is geometric consistency. Basically, you have to make a correspondence between background scene and CG. And uh, uh, in fact, there are many methods. One is a uh, Canon system, uh, which has a small TV camera and also small uh, equipment which receive a uh, uh, magnetic field. 
This guy pro uh, propagates magnetic field and determine relative relation of this goggle with respect to this uh, pole. And this, TV, uh, this goggle has a small TV camera, so background image, and since you know the relative relation of this uh, goggle, so display CG in front of you, then user see this kind of uh, CG on side. Another method which we are using on tram, uh, put the TV camera on top of this uh, uh, moving vehicle and uh, distribute the image to all the users. And then, you know, uh, at the client side, by using e compass gyro, determine viewing direction, cut out few uh, areas, and then display CGs. Another method is, of course, I'm a computer vision guy, so, so by using computer vision technique, uh, we can make a correspondence between background image and uh, a real scene. I'll skip details. I'll skip details. <laughs> and, you know, uh, from this kind of background, you can obtain correspondence and then uh, display CG like that. Another issue is photometric consistency. Even though this object appears exactly the same position, however, this guy looks floating while this guy on the table. How many people believe you know, this guy looks floating? Okay. But how many people believe this shows exactly the same position? Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, in fact, you know, uh, if you see this kind of area, you know, uh, same distance, and if you extend, you reach. So probably you will see, probably this guy is a two object display exactly the same position. But why this looks floating while this guy on the table? Because this guy has a shadow while this guy doesn't have a shadow. So when you go to Kawahara Dera, if temple is floating, that's not good, right? So we need uh, uh, shadows. And one of the uh, issue is, is, one of the method is, we collected the uh, various illumination condition by using fisheye lens and calculate ratio by occluded by virtual object. If there is no virtual object, from all direction energy come to this particular pixel. If there is a ob virtual object like this, one particular direction is occluded and you only receive partial energy. By calculating this kind of ratio, by darkening, you can see this kind of shadows. And this kind of video can be created. But the problem was, this video was created seven years ago. It takes one week of CPU time of supercomputer center of the University of Tokyo. And if you say, well, please wait one week, you can see shadow. But that doesn't method doesn't work. So definitely we need a real-time system. So we come up with uh, an idea, shadow under, under light source A, B, C is a simple summation of shadow under light source A, shadow under light source B, shadow under light source C. So we calculate shadow under light source, each direction uh, shadows offline and prepare lookup tables and then online measure illumination condition of various viewing dire uh, illumination directions and simply multiply this kind of uh, uh, illumination strength to the original uh, shadow image and we, you can create a, a shadow on, la on uh, real time. Yeah, 10 more minutes. And by using this one, we can create this kind of CGs. Important point is this CG, depending on background image, looks uh, you know, different. If back, background become darker, this CG become darker. Another issue is when you go to famous sites, there are many sightseers, and this kind of occlusion occurs. And by using segmentation method, we can create this kind of uh, uh, front image and background image. But the important point is shadows. And we create this kind of system. Important point is this is background, and this is virtual object. But, in, but somehow, this guy's shadow will be 
projected on this uh, uh, CGs. And we did this kind of uh, demonstration of Soma Vesviana. This is the original uh, image. On top of that original image, superimpose the CGs. We did the same demonstration at the Foro Romana in Roma City. And this uh, vice mayor is quite happy because <laughs> on this side, he is seeing this kind of image. And we did a uh, uh, similar experiment at uh, Asuka uh, Village too. I'll skip this one. Yeah, there's a long story, but uh, you know. This girl is happy because uh, through this one, you know, on top of this real scene, this kind of uh, virtual scene appears. Finally, visiting. Yeah, well, famous side, you are moving around, but while you are moving, you are wasting time. So we are proposing while you are moving, if you see the, uh, this kind of CG, uh, moving is much uh, interesting. And moreover, we can convert entire area into Tema Park. If we visit here, some of the massacre is occurring, moving around, then uh, usual people are uh, living in a uh, peaceful manner or whatever. So that, you know, this you can create a time machine. You can enter into the particular period of time and see various events in front of you. And this is a tram which we use for that time machines. And the only difference is this tram has a, a this kind of uh, head mount display to each seat. And then, you know, uh, background image is obtained by using lady bars. And that image is distributed and pasted on the uh, cube. And depending on the viewing direction, particular direction is cut out. So that this guy can see this one, this, guy, this person looks this one, and this uh, poor grad student working. And then, uh, of course, the illumination uh, condition is obtained by using this one too. An important point is not only building, but also we show this kind of event. So how to create such event is one of the issue. One way is utilizing all the movies and cut out just only person and uh, uh, obtain this kind of dance scene. Or, uh, you know, a grad student playing around and extract only grad student and paste on the image and massacre scenes. And in fact, you know, uh, this uh, uh, Kawahara Dera is famous due to this massacre around Uchioka around AD 672. By the way, this is a, a master student, this is a PhD student. Every day he's, he's used by this guy, so he's kidding, joking. And uh, of course, a head mount uh, uh, audio system too. Basically, uh, when you ride on, uh, put head mount display and uh, uh, sound system. And then, you know, uh, this lady is saying, oh, ancient people are moving around. In fact, you know, uh, this vehicle is running inside with CAD model, and also some massacre is occurring inside. In fact, outside is like this peaceful uh, rice field. However, in scene like this, and on this uh, particular real scene, CG will be superimposed. Wait a minute. Superimpose. Not yet. <laughs> like that. And if you go to that dire different directions, some of the massacre is occurring. Tachibanashi o shiteiru hito mo imas. Fukamidori. So shite. No medama wa. Now one person is killed. Sobano iruka ga hansatsu sare yo to shite imas.
Yeah, actually, this is a summary of uh, 10 years research. And uh, I created uh, uh, 10, 15 PhD students. And currently, our group consists of uh, 30 grad students and 15 uh, master students, 15 PhD students. That's kind of a size. Yeah, well, one of the agenda is to, in my opinion, uh, all the heritage should be digitized. However, our uh, resource is limited. So uh, we should uh, make uh, various uh, uh, digitization groups all together in the world, actually. And for that, you know, uh, what we can do is sometime we can provide sensors over sometime softwares. And in fact, you know, each country model is slightly different. You know, Cambodia case, uh, we provide everything, teaching, uh, training, and software and hardware. Uh, Turkish case, uh, they purchase sensors and we help to start such project. Indian case, again, Indian government, uh, I persuade, uh, uh, yeah, well, they use me to persuade Indian government, and they start up uh, a project. And then, you know, uh, recently, 
they invite me as a, sum, a summing up a, a symposium. So each country is slightly different patterns. Well, uh, in fact, you know, every aspect actually, <laughs> so sorry about that, you know. Uh, yeah, because, you know, uh, in terms of uh, uh, digitization, you know, right, right now we are using a uh, range sensor, but that's too expensive. And in my opinion, uh, yeah, in fact, you know, Microsoft Redmond people are working, uh, you know, using simple TV camera and collect data. So I think such a, you know, uh, Grassroots effort is important. So how to uh, generate uh, uh, cheap sensors? And also, uh, how to collect such data in central areas? That is data acquisition issues. The second issue is display. And uh, right now, we are using head mount display or whatever. But you know, in my opinion, uh, more advanced head mount display is better, and also at that time, how to make a correspondence between CG and outer world is another issue too. And third issue, analysis. You know, still our analysis tool is limited, and uh, we need sophisticated software to compare two data or to analyze. So. All three areas has a challenge, actually. Yes. Uh, Hyperspectral image is limited, actually. Uh, we only apply such data to uh, Japanese uh, Northern Kyushu tumulus, though I digitize uh, 10 tumulus. And uh, uh, Bayon, uh, instead of uh, yeah, well, Bion case, we analyze uh, uh, biology, biological organism on the wall so that, you know, how they different distribution depending on seasons and how they produce, uh, what kind of bacteria produce, what kind of chemicals, and then how that affect the wall uh, decay, actually. But, uh, but still limited, actually. So how long did you spend on each site? Like, how long was the acquisition process? Well, you know, that's a long story, you know. Of course, if there is a software and hardware, we can uh, do quickly. But, you know, by your case, while we are developing sensors, sensors, they fail, next year come back and they digitize. So, you know, it takes five years. But only, if, uh, you know, each year, maybe 12 or 15 graduate students visit two weeks. The reason is uh, uh, weather is severe to Japanese people, and every day, out of 12 grad students, two or three guys is down due to the severe, severe sunlight or diarrhea, actually. So maybe 10 people multiply two weeks, multiply five is a uh, uh, you know, period. OK. Uh -huh. yeah. I have a question. I wanted to know more or less the pedagogical potential of this kind of uh, information, knowledge that you have been able to um, amass through these, these projects. Are you working with, uh, let's say, uh, educational institutions, public schools, or are you working with other universities around the world that would allow you to work with students who want to know about the, the, this kind of knowledge? Uh, in fact, no. Uh, basically, in education, uh, we provide uh, uh, DVD of CG to uh, preliminary school. That's the only uh, effort which we have done. But uh, our collaboration, we are working archaeologists of uh, Tohoku University and also uh, Waseda University and uh, to analyzing. But that's not education, rather research, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. First of all, let me say uh, thank you for a very interesting presentation. 
And uh, I have a, a question of uh, methodology. That is, um, well, I've seen some of your um, data, and I was wondering why uh, or while you are uh, doing data acquisition, no matter which site that is, um, how would you adapt or would you change in the methodological approach and therefore the technology that you would be using if you had to consider uh, that uh, the data should also be used for conservation purposes and uh, then in future compare for conservation purposes. So um, how much this part is in your work or how do you see this happening? Uh, in fact, you know, I skip uh, component uh, today, but you know, one of the uh, finding which we obtain is, uh, let's see. Uh, bus relief of uh, uh, Bayon Temple, and uh, uh, we regularly digitizing, and uh, what we have observed was uh, one year uh, there was a data discrepancy between uh, previous years, and apparently some of the rock fall down, and uh, let's see. Yeah, fall down, and uh, let's see. Uh, let's see, no, uh, you know, uh, 208, this kind of range data obtained, and uh, 210, apparently there is a discrepancy, and this is a size, how much a rock is falling down. Uh, between two years uh, area difference, actually. And originally, we planned to use this kind of technique for how decay occur, but you know, still our sensor's uh, accuracy is only one millimeter resolution, so a small decay cannot be detected. Okay. So would you say that uh, you are uh, also applying a methodology which then uh, it's defined by protocol so that you can go back and compare uh, data. Yeah. That's your purpose. Yes. And the last and final <laughs> question. Yeah, before that, you know, and also, you know, uh, this kind of Bayon Temple uh, shape doesn't, uh, shape different doesn't occur. But, you know, one of the uh, original intention was, you know, in Japan, there is a, a king called Himiko. They distributed the, uh, uh, mirrors to the, uh, every important guys. Mm -hmm. However, each time they make a, a copy, gradually uh, decay occurs. So by checking how different each mirror is, we can check how Himiko expands their areas. Yeah. And uh, you know, for that, we have to worry about not only just simple difference, but also sometimes mirror are deformed. So Deformable uh, representation, uh, deformable alignment is necessary. So we are developing such technique too, actually. I've seen, uh, I mean, you talked about uh, your very uh, talented um, uh, graduate students. Um, do you uh, normally work uh, with uh, archaeologists and um, conservators, or I should rather say, how is your relationship with them? How they see your work? Yeah, well, you know, uh, they are also interested in, and for example, uh, one of the uh, professor case, she is uh, at Tohoku University, uh, densely working with us, and uh, yeah, actually uh, I showed the uh, Pompeii's uh, statue case. That is her idea, and uh, originally she thought, you know, uh, this looks, uh, this foot is uh, uh, resembling each other, and uh, they ask us to check each other, and uh, you know, uh, according to her, each comp which component, which part is important, which part doesn't care, or something, is giving giving by her. So we are closely working, and also, uh, Bayon Temple, uh, one group of uh, conservators is physically uh, restoring that Bayon Temple, and uh, 
they need floor plan, so they ask us uh, to digitize and compare. And again, we're closely working with them, actually. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Katsushi. It is really a wonderful presentation, and we Thank hope you. you'll be back again and show us more uh, uh, progress. Thank you very much. Thank you.